Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, joining me today is someone that I've been having a very good conversation with before we actually started this, uh, Nick e. Eberly of the Lost River Drive-In. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you? I am doing very well. So for those of you that don't know his channel, I have the links down here in the description, as well as all his social media links. But Nick, what can you tell everybody about the channel? So the Lost River Drive-In started as Coasters Are Beast 09 in 2009 because I was obsessed with roller coasters. And I wanted to take a video camera and just show people the horror movies I had. Uh, went through some lapses over the years of not recording anything and uh, finally decided to do a rebranding, uh, get a modern name and uh, get some editing and uh, production quality behind it. So basically what, what I do over there um, is rankings, reviews, collections, reactions, all things horror related. Uh, it's movie centric in general, but mainly horror. Like I have a Godzilla versus Kong review on there, but most of my stuff is horror. Um, my buddy, Phil is the producer. I've known Phil for damn near two decades. Uh, he's a tech wizard. So I record this stuff. He edits it. We drop it together and that's, that's how we do it. Um, but yeah, man, it's, uh, it's a channel that's been around a long time that is just now finally gaining some traction. So, but uh, I, I enjoy what I do and I enjoy talking horror and all things to do with horror. So, well, man, hard work pays off, man. That's the great part about it. You do it for so long and you finally catch a break, man. I'm glad. And I stumbled upon your channel and you and I were talking about our different franchise rankings. And I thought this would be an amazing thing for us to do together. I'll eventually have you back on for a franchise ranking. But before oh, yeah. we could do that, I need to know where horror started for you, my friend. And I want to talk about the first horror movie you ever watched. And your first horror movie was? The Exorcist. Yes, sir. Um, whew, I watched The Exorcist when I, the first time I can remember, I was like five years old. My mom loved the movie and she was a Linda Blair fan. Um, so she actually was watching it one day and uh, she was watching it on TV and she was like, hey, you, you know, you think you can handle it? Because I was out there, you know, sitting on the couch there. And I was like, yeah, I can handle it, whatever. Um, I vividly remember feeling like I could handle it until Reagan's head spun around. And then I couldn't handle it anymore. Um, right. That scene as a child, I'm sitting here because I grew up in a very uh, religious household. So we believed in the supernatural and I believed that stuff was real. And mm -hmm. when... I see her head spin around. I'm like, first of all, I'm a kid. She's a kid. Uh, this should not be physically possible. Um, second of all, if that's what a demon's going to do to you, I am even more terrified of demons. Uh, and that stuck with me forever. It was so bad that my older brother many times would like open the door to my bedroom and like start turning his head like he was Reagan and like making noises. I mean, it was that they, they, I was scarred because of that scene. But yeah, that was the first horror movie I ever saw. So thanks, mom, for showing The Exorcist to a five year old. Really? And it's it's funny because like I've talked about this on the channel a lot. And at the point of filming, um, it's Tuesday the 13th right now. Yeah. Um, tomorrow, the 14th, actually, my Exorcist franchise ranking comes out. And okay. very excited about that. Um, I could spoil it now because you people have already seen it, but. Exorcist is not number one on that list. That's all I'm going to say. The Exorcist is not number one. I think it's the best one, but it is not my favorite. Um, and The Exorcist has a stigma with me because I grew up in a video store. So I used to watch horror movies all the time as a kid. And The Exorcist is the only movie that my mom shut off. She was like, nope, you're, you're not watching. This is too much. Yeah. You can't do this. And um, so it always has that stigma. And um, there's, we talked about the head spin. Obviously, that's a big one. Can you think of any other scenes that really, really hit you hard as a kid? Yeah, um, the scene where her mother is up in the attic and the candle just ignites like the flame magnifies by 10, the size of it just out of nowhere. And um, that scared me when I was a kid and I actually just rewatched this the other night to prepare for this to, you know, remind myself. And it scared me still. I was like, oh, OK, that's freaky. Um, and then um, when I, it's very uncomfortable to talk about. Um, but it's a scene that stuck with me forever when she has the crucifix and, you know, she's stabbing herself and whatnot. I was like, this is not okay. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I think that 
uh, she Linda Blair did fantastic, man. I mean, the, being asked to do that as a child and to come off that believable, sure, the makeup helped, sure, the effects helped, but like you have to give the performance. And like she came across as like, stay far away from me. Like I, <laughs> that, that stuff, that's nightmare fuel. I mean, pretty much any scene from the moment that she pees her pants on has the capability of just sticking with me forever. But those are a couple of the scenes that I, when I think about The Exorcist and what sticks in my memory, those are some of the ones that I'm like, uh-uh, nope. And I usually put clips over top as we're talking about them, but that is one clip I'll never put over top. I hope you guys understand and respect that. But if you haven't yeah. seen The Exorcist, it's a very graphic scene. And I feel about that scene, as a kid, I didn't completely understand what was going on there. And this movie in general, um, you're a father as well. I'm not going to say the age or whatever, but you have children. I have children. And watching this movie as a child and watching this movie as an adult, you feel two completely different things. Um, as a child, you're like, you know, why wouldn't the parents just leave and blah, blah. Now as a dad, I'm like, you know, how terrified would I be if that's my little girl laying in that bed and going through this and I can't help her do my, the only job I have now to protect her and I can't do it. So this movie still to this day, I think is the scariest movie ever made. Um, I think there's a reason this movie did what it did when it came out. I think the reason the reactions, I think that they're valid reasons. Um, this is a terrifying movie. I've always been a believer in Christ. I still am a big believer in Christ. I don't believe in organized religion. I think it's very hypocritical. I don't want to get too much into that because that's not why we're here. But as a believer in Christ, this is something that's always scared me as well. Just like you said, you grew up in a, in a you know religious home. It's something I did as well. And so it's something that's always scared me. And I think that you need the good and the bad without, if you say there's no God, that means there's no devil. And there's way too much evil in this world for there not to be a devil. So that's yeah. my take on that whole aspect. Um, so we know what scene affected you the most. But now, yeah. Nick, I want to know, and this is a really fucking hard one to pick in this movie, but what's your favorite scene from The Exorcist? Oh, my goodness. Um, I want to say my favorite scene is the actual exorcism. Um, and I think and I know that's probably like typical, but just the the way they like the scene, the way they set that you can tell the, ro the room's freezing cold. Um, and the entire time this is happening, you have um, Reagan or the, you know, the demon inside Reagan. Um, just the maniacal like laughing and taunting of of them as they're trying to exercise this demon out of her is like i put myself in that position and like mm -hmm. you said i am the same way i i'm still religious i just don't believe in organized religion uh yeah. so i'm still a uh, believer in christ as well and so this still shakes me on my core but the way i look at it is like i put myself in the position and i'm like how could i continue to perform this exorcism if this was happening to me i would yeah. want to punch her I mean, I would want, I mean, I would want to fight that demon. Like you come out, let's, let's fist fight. But like yep. just that whole scene. And, and I love how it's, there's some movies, there's some exorcism movies that those scenes can take too long and you feel like, right. okay, we get it. Like you're trying to exercise a demon. Like this is dragging. But in this movie, like just the stages of it, it's like, you feel like, oh, there's no hope. There's no way they're going to be able to do this. Like they're about to give in there. I mean, it's just, I love it. That is my favorite scene because of, you have part of you wants to laugh sometimes at the things the demon is saying and because you're like, oh, that's pretty messed up. But like part of you, you know, the biggest part of you the whole time is like, man, like that sucks. Like, I don't know right. what I would do in that situation. Like, and so I want to say the, the darkest somebody, thing, man, right before they actually get to it, when Reagan starts carving, help me oh, on yeah. her own stomach, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, like the heartbreak you feel when you see yep. that, like she is still in there. You know, like she's still in there. That little girl, that innocent little girl is still in there. Cause obviously, you know, with the demon, you got Pazuzu and you, you almost start to see Pazuzu instead of a little girl, you know, but then you get this and you're like, oh, that little girl is still in there. You know, like yeah. that's so terrifying and so heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. um, so with, with the exorcist, something I always ask when I talk about franchise based movies, and now I'm not talking about all the offshoots, the exorcism of and all that. I'm talking about the five titles in the exorcist. You got exorcist, the heretic, exorcist two, exorcist three, exorcist, the beginning and dominion, a prequel to the exorcist of those five, which is your favorite? 
Okay, so I'm I'm gonna name two because I think the obvious one is the original, and I, I that is my favorite. That's the one I find myself watching the most. Um, I will say though, one that I feel is heavily underrated that I find myself watching a lot as well, probably second is three. I mm-hmm. I really enjoy three. I watch Exorcist. I watch The Heretic, and I felt like it was a little unnecessary. Um, and whereas once you get past that, okay, we've got a sequel, it's happened, whatever, it's over and done with. And then you get a third movie. It's like, you don't feel as blasphemous about them making a sequel anymore because there already was one. So, um, I have not seen Dominion, um, and I haven't seen the beginning. Um, oh man, I was probably a teenager. So it's probably been, you know, damn near 15 years since I saw that. They're the same movie, bro. Yeah, and that's what that's what I've always read, that it's essentially like a shot for shot of each movie. And that's why it always confused me when I was younger. Like, is it the same movie? Did they just rebrand it? Because like I keep it's, reading it's, it's insane. The same. Yeah, it is two different movies. Like there are differences in them. But what happened was they filmed Dominion first and they gave it to um I can't I want to say Seattle Creek, but that's not right. That's a record company, a record label, but something Creek, Morgan Creek. And the guy was like, this is a piece of shit. We're not releasing this. I want you to change this, 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 this. They changed it. And then a year later, he was like, yeah, let's make some more money and release this straight to DVD. The big piece of shit that it is. And I will say this. I'm not going to say which one, but I'm doing a top 10 least favorite horror movies of all time. And one of these Exorcist movies is number one on that list. There is one of these Exorcist movies that I think is the biggest piece of dog shit I've ever seen in my life. And you'd never hear me criticize stuff. I was like, you know, if you're doing art, good for you and good for them. For people that yeah. I've talked to people that enjoy this certain Exorcist movie that I'm thinking of, but I think it's terrible. I think it's boring. I think it's just the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. Um, but before we go, my friend, I got two more questions for you. We talked about The Exorcist. That was the first horror movie you watched. Now I want to go scream on you here for a second. What's your favorite scary movie, Nick? <laughs> what is your favorite horror movie of all time? Well, my favorite scary <laughs> movie would be Halloween, 1978, John Carpenter's. And I know, oh my gosh, that is the most basic response that you can give as a horror fan. But it is. And that is because, um, as, as well as Linda Blair, my mom absolutely loved Jamie Lee Curtis. And Halloween was one of her favorite movies. And so I grew up watching that movie all the time. So my favorite scary movie is Halloween. I'm actually an avid Halloween collector. So... You know, I've poured. You, you can say what you want, man. People, it's cliche. It's cliche. It's cliche for a fucking reason because it's an amazing movie. Um, yep. The older I've gotten, the more I've come to appreciate Halloween and Michael Myers. We were talking about the big three before we started this, and I have a favorite in the big three for a reason. Freddy was always my favorite because he could get you no matter what. You can't escape him. You got to sleep. I always love Jason because the kills. I think the kills are really unique. He's not just stab, 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 kill, kill, kill. And I've always loved Michael the older I got because it's so realistic. Even in Halloween, when he comes back and he's, his mask is off and you see it's just a guy. He's just mm-hmm. a guy. And it's not a monster. It's not a dream guy. It's just a real human dude. And that's yeah. fucking terrifying. And I, will, I will always maintain that although Halloween is my favorite, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody to say that Freddy Krueger is not the scariest of the three. Because guess what? We all have to sleep at some yeah. point. So, I mean, he... He scared the crap out of me as a kid because I had actually got to a point where I would have watched those movies for a while because I didn't want to, you know, have it in my brain and then have a nightmare about it. And then in my nightmare, think, is this real? Am I going to die? So, <laughs> right. yeah, I no, I, I agree with you totally on that. <clears throat> so before we sign off, we always go back to the exorcist, man. And we end this with a skull count. Now, we're not being produ- or we're not being um, we're not doing a review on the movie right now. Yeah. We're not being critics. We're not ranking it on production. None of that. Acting. We're ranking this movie strictly on what it means to you and how it affected you. So zero skulls being the worst, five being the best. You can use half and quarter skulls. What would your ranking of The Exorcist be? So this might surprise some people because I have, you know, talked about how influential this movie was to me. Uh, I'm going 4.5 out of 5. And okay. the th- and. I surprise people because they might think, oh, you were going to, I thought you were going to go five. Um, the only thing that keeps it away from a five for me is, and I, since you're a fan of the franchise and you've seen all the movies, I'm sure you can admit as well, there are scenes, there are times in the movie where it definitely drags. 
And I feel like yeah. Oh, yeah. there are there are moments where I'm just kind of like, I get exposition, I get character development, but it gets to a point where it's like, we know what's happening. Like, don't toy around with me. Just like, let's let's get to it more. Let's speed it up. Um, but that is a minor critique for an otherwise fantastic movie. Well, so I mean, it's one of those things where if that's if that's the only criticism you have with the movie, that shows how fucking amazing it is, man. Yeah. So I'm going so, 4.5 out of 5. I'm going to say that is like, that is elite tier for me. That, I mean, it is a fantastic movie. I, I agree with you. I think it's amazing. Um, Nick, don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you before we sign off. Everybody else, like I said, make sure you're subscribing to his YouTube channel. Follow him on social media so you can get all his rankings, reviews. The links are right here in the description. So it's not like you got to go searching for the guy. He's right here. So make sure you're giving him some love. As always, guys, keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.